new session of 4CD that uh, consists of interviews with uh, influential people and public figures on issues of politics, economics, business, foreign policy, and uh, public affairs. Our guest today is um, Marianne Miles, the ambassador of the United States to the Republic of Cape Verde. Um, Ms. Miles joined, joined the U.S. Foreign Service in 1975, and during her 30-plus year of career, has served in a wider variety of positions, both overseas and uh, in Washington. She has worked for the U.S. State Department in several countries, including uh, Uruguay, Italy, Brazil, and Colombia. She speaks Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese, and she's a multiple recipient of the Department of State Superior and the Meritorious Honor Awards. Today she will discuss several topics with us, uh, which include her plans for her tenure in, as the U.S. Ambassador in Cape Verde, immigration and uh, deportation, U.S. foreign policy, and um, towards Cape Verde, the Millennium Challenge Account, U.S. and Cape Verdean uh, business opportunity, women's education, and we'll also touch a little on um, democracy and freedom in Cape Verde for her, for her point of view. So we'll start uh, by talking a little about uh, her plans for Cape Verde as the ambassador of the United States. Good afternoon, Ambassador Good afternoon. Thank you for traveling to Boston to meet with us in this interview. Great pleasure. Now, my first question to you is whether you can tell us a little bit about you that most Cape Verdeans in the diaspora here in this United States may not be aware of in terms of your work in Cape Verde. Well, um, one thing that I would mention is that I've spent a lot of time during my career overseas, and so I have a good appreciation for the relationship that is structured between a country and, uh, and the United States. So one of the things that I'm very interested in since the United States and Cape Verde have a very good relationship and have had over many years a very good relationship, um, I'm very uh, focused on continuing that, that good relationship. So the answer to your question uh, is that my years of experience overseas um, are moving me in the, in the direction, motivating me to work very hard to make sure that the relationship between our two countries um, stays as positive as it is and gets even better. Great. So um, you, you have been in Cape Verde since um, August this year. Yes. So how's the settlement process going on? And what's the first impression of the country? And um, what do you see for the work that you have in front of you? Well, the uh, settling in process um, was fairly easy, and the reason for that is because I found Cape Verdeans to be very friendly, um, very interested uh, in the United States and in the relationship, very positive, and of course we recently had uh, the elections uh, in, in the United States, and I was um, very pleased with the interest, the level of interest that Cape Verdeans took in the, in the U.S. elections. Also, um, with regard to uh, Cape Verdean Americans, dual citizens, I was very pleased that so many um, Cape Verdean Americans wanted to vote, and we had many come to the embassy to register and to obtain uh, information about absentee ballots so that they could participate in this election. So it was, uh, it was very, very exciting, and uh, I was very pleased to see that level of interest. Um, with regard to my initial impressions, I think that um, one thing I did not fully appreciate until I arrived in Cape Verde and had the opportunity to do some traveling to the other islands is what a great challenge it is um, to, uh, to move the economy in particular uh, forward, to move forward also the education system, the health system, uh, because of the difficulty of having to replicate all of the structures nine times on the nine inhabited islands, uh, it is uh, truly a, a, a challenge that most countries don't face. And I think that um, Cape Verde, um, having made the progress that it has made, um, really is, uh, is 
is to be lauded for the, the, um, the dynamism and the, the, uh, the effort that is being made because it is indeed a, a, a significant challenge. Uh, our next question is, what is your main agenda towards Cape Verde as, a, as an ambassador to Cape Verde? Well, as I uh, already mentioned, my primary goal is to maintain the relationship uh, in the positive way that it has progressed over the last several years, and in fact, find ways to make the relationship even better. To do that, there are um, priorities, of course, and I have three specific priorities on which I will be working personally and which the staff at the American Embassy will be working. Um, those three priorities include, of course, um, security issues, uh, economic issues, and also uh, education issues, because education is very closely tied to a very strong democracy. Very good. Let's talk a little about um, deportation and um, immigration. It's an issue that's very uh, concerning the Cuban community here and in Cape Verde. Um, according to an article published in um, irinnews.org um, on November 26, about uh, 900 Cape Verdeans have been uh, deported back to the island since uh, 1992. And according to the Cape Verde's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the number of uh, returnees to Cape Verde doubled between 2006 and 2007, from 61 to 128. Uh, they are mostly young men, and they said that um, when they return home, they only find plenty of drugs, unemployment, uh, discrimination, and they have a hard time fitting in. So is there any specific plan between the United States and um, Cape Verde to tackle this issue? Well, uh, there are lots of issues rolled up into the question that you've asked. Um, the first thing that I would like to note is that every country, including Cape Verde, uh, has the right to deport uh, citizens of other countries, particularly uh, when those citizens of other countries run afoul of the law. And so I don't think that there is any question about the legality or the um, uh, appropriateness of the, the deportations, but I do understand that the deportations in a society like Cape Verde, which is very closely knit, is located on several islands, going back again to the, uh, to the geography of the country, that it does create um, uh, problems for integration of the deportees into uh, local society. Um, I think that there are things that can be done. I know that the Cape Verdean government um, is very interested in um, taking measures and is taking measures to mitigate the negative effects of the, the uh, arrival of Cape Verdean citizens, particularly Cape Verdean citizens who haven't lived in Cape Verde in many years or, or haven't lived um, in Cape Verde almost at all because they uh, came to United States as children. I know that there are several uh, programs underway to assist deportees uh, when they arrive, and not just deportees from the United States, but deportees from um, European countries and uh, from Brazil and from other uh, countries as well. So I think that um, the government of Cape Verde um, has a plan and is very interested in uh, moving that plan forward quickly. For my part, um, with regard to what the United States um, can do as a partner of Cape Verde, um, my intention is to collaborate to the extent that I can uh, with the Cape Verdean government and to help um, provide uh, training in particular so that there would be an opportunity for uh, employment after the deportees return. I mentioned that I have three priorities and education is one of them. And one of the um, programs that we have just launched uh, with an NGO uh, in Cape Verde is a uh, vocational training program um, for uh, people who do need uh, skills in order to enable them to get jobs. And deportees fall into that category, so there will be an opportunity for deportees 
to get job training. The job training is specifically geared toward um, recycled glass. And so I'm very excited about this program because not only will it provide job opportunities, job training and job opportunities for people who otherwise wouldn't have them, but also provides an opportunity to, uh, to perform some recycling, um, meaning that we'll be able to help um, the Cape Verdean government and uh, in particular the city of Praia to uh, get some of the uh, glass off of the streets. Uh, the purpose of the program is that the glass will be used uh, eventually in the construction industry, which is another benefit because then um, there will be an opportunity to help uh, uh, build uh, or have, have this, this material contribute toward new, new building in uh, Cape Verde. Um, uh, last Friday, um, there was a meeting bet between um, Cape Verdean um, and Portuguese authorities and the community representatives and the uh, U.S. authorities in Washington to yes. discuss this issue. And uh, um, Ms. Um, Miles was present too during that meeting. So yes. would you mind telling us about the specific outcome from that meeting? I'd be delighted to. The, um, one of the interesting things about the meeting is that it was attended by Congressman Barney Frank, who obviously has a very strong interest in Cape Verde. And he was asked about the intention of the Congress to change immigration law and to change the provisions of the law that provide for retroactivity, which has created many problems um, for not only Cape Verdeans, but um, citizens of many countries who um, have a difficulty um, with the law or had a difficulty many years ago and then um, have gone on to lead productive lives. Congressman Frank um, is very um, interested in seeing some changes uh, to the immigration law. I don't want to speak um, for him and I don't know the details of his intention, but he addressed the group um, in a very positive way and uh, was very interested in um, um, discussing uh, with the new administration uh, immigration as, uh, as an overall issue. And of course the deportations is are just one aspect of, uh, of immigration uh, reform. But I think that it's important to note that there is interest in the U.S. Congress uh, in making some changes to uh, immigration law and to um, change, making some changes in U.S. legislation that might have um, a positive impact on the deportation issue. Now, you mentioned a uh, NGO that was involved. And, uh, uh, forming of uh, curriculum for deportations? Yes. What specific organization? The, uh, the program is intended to assist, as I mentioned, um, people who are in a difficult situation so that they um, can obtain some job skills that will provide them with opportunities. Uh, the, the main problem as far as I can see with the deportees is that they arrive unequipped to deal with the circumstances uh, in which they find themselves. So particularly if they don't speak the language, if they don't have uh, job skills, um, if they have no family support uh, mechanism, uh, they basically find themselves in what to them uh, is a foreign environment and they need to survive as any of us uh, could. And so um, the purpose of uh, the effort that the Cape Verdean government is putting forward and that we uh, will be collaborating with, uh, particularly with the launch of this, uh, this program, is to help create a situation in which reintegration into Cape Verdean society can be done more quickly, more positively, and will lead to uh, long-term benefit. I should also mention that we've been working with uh, authorities here in Massachusetts, also in Rhode Island, to help prepare um, people who are going to be deported prior to their deportion, de deportation so that they can um, make good use of the time that they have here to prepare themselves, again, uh, with uh, language preparation, with an orientation of what life is like uh, in Cape Verde, 
and also potentially with some job training. Right. Was, was there a specific non-governmental organization uh, started to share this? Um, there, are, there are a couple, and in fact, I'm not going to name them uh, at this time because we haven't yet formalized the agreement uh, that we will be signing uh, in order to provide for the grant. And so uh, once that agreement is signed, I'd be happy to talk with you about it again. Great. Uh, it's not now what 